Porsche and F1 are not usually used within a single sentence. In the 1960s, there were some attempts in open wheelers with minor success, though the 1980s Porsche and tag partnership had a big impact on the sport. Germans timidly introduced a Metzger-developed F1 engine made from scratch that went on to bring multiple trophies and victories home despite its shortage of power compared to the leaders like BMW and Renault. The development was so meticulous that they even placed the engine into a road legal 930 turbo. The era dominated by the DFE engine was drawing to a close. Reynolds' early endeavors in the late 1970s had paved the way for the ascent of compact, turbocharged engines into the racing scene, and McLaren decided to task Porsche with an engine development. With third-party funding from the Luxembourg-based TAG holding company, Porsche was able to deliver the engine. This marked the inception of the TAG Porsche TTE P01, although Porsche was cautious and only later adorned the engine with made by Porsche markings, when its success became evident. But first, a huge shout out to all my Patreons supporting this channel. Feel free to join them to keep the channel growing. Thank you. The assignment was given to Hans Metzger, who worked in close collaboration with McLaren. As a boxer was not feasible mostly due to aerodynamic constraints, they settled on an 80 degree V6 engine, chosen for its compact size as regulations permitted boosted engines with as little as 1.5 litre engine displacement. A 4 cylinder would not rev as high, and a V8 would have sacrificed fuel efficiency. The engine block was crafted from lightweight aluminum and featured a wet Nicasil liner design. The aluminum heads featured a 30 degree valve angle and twin camshafts. Inside there were forged aluminum pistons, titanium connecting rods and non-offset crankshaft, thus the engine featuring an uneven sound. This design, however, eliminated the continuous compression and expansion inherent in engines with a single crankshaft throw per cylinder. By transferring air between opposing pistons, it reduced energy consumption, minimized crankcase vibrations, and alleviated oil pressure concerns. The engine was equipped with a pair of triple K turbochargers, delivering an impressive 2.5 bar of boost. Although its power output of 600 horsepower at 11,500 rpm in 1983 was not the highest among the competitors. It astounded the entire F1 community with its dominance and reliability. A key factor in its success was its exceptional fuel efficiency, attributed to the superior water cooling, thanks to which there was no need for a richer fuel mixture to cool the engine from the inside. Refueling during races was prohibited at the time, and these turbocharged engines were quite thirsty when running at high boost levels. The engine continued in the following years, running a high boost, pushing its potential to 800 horsepower in race trim, with up to 1060 horsepower at 12,600 rpm close to the end of its lifespan. Driven by Alan Prost and Niki Lauda, clinching victories in both the 1984 and 1985 seasons, and second place in both the 1986 and 1987 seasons. The McLaren tags were so competitive that the 1984 driver's title became a private matter between Alan Prost and me. The fact that we won 12 out of 16 rounds between us says a lot. Porsche did a really great job, recalls Niki Lauda. Remarkable results, yet it wasn't just the engine lifespan that was interesting about it. What many people may not be aware of is that during the 1980s, Porsche took a 930 turbo and replaced its heart with this remarkable F1 V6 engine for testing purposes. 
Several changes were needed, including adapting this water-cooled engine into an air-cooled chassis. The well spoiler had to be raised to accommodate the incredibly large intercoolers, and the roof-styled wheels replaced the Fox. They even installed a tag rail counter, peaking at 10,000 RPM. This unique non-commercial concept served as an inspiration for an automotive company with a rich motorsport history, Lanzante. The firm acquired 11 tag engines from McLaren that had seen actual race in action. The team collaborated with Cosworth to tame this engine for the roads. It received smaller turbos and operated at a lower boost with an equally impressive redline of 9000 RPM. The cable-operated engine delivered 500 horsepower and 420 Nm of torque in a body that was massively lighter than the stock car. To further enhance its performance, the vehicle featured all-in skylovers, ceramic brakes and a Porsche G50-20 gearbox with an LSD borrowed from the 993 Carra 2. The gearing allowed the car to reach a top speed of 290 km per Porsche purists typically have a strong preference for box engines in classic 911s, but this F1 engine swap stands as the ultimate conversion. It is important to note that this is the very power plant that propelled McLaren to 25 Grand Prix victories, along with two constructor and three drivers' championships. Each of the Lanzante cars would receive a plague of the engine's history. This engine is indeed a truly special piece of automotive history. In 2023, a single TTE P01 engine was auctioned by Bonhams, bearing the number 25 out of 40 produced, fetching an impressive price of over 61,000 Swiss francs. Um, we can take a relaunch of Archie Pinto Marto, uh, taking the opportunity to come to Goodwood to Port Square, get through the manufacturer, uh, to our back, first round, and also the uh, road bike.